Hey everyone, we were having a little team meeting here and we, we had this issue where the JSON that was getting returned from an API call we we're doing, it had a dollar sign in the name and, and we were struggling to figure out how to use it with the library. And as AS was walking us through this, I don't think I've seen uglier code. Like it is a really ugly, <laughs> first, right? Like as yeah, my first yeah. girlfriend. Oh, I mean, um, anyway. Wait, so <laughs> let me show you real quick. So first, this happens when you're doing um this is not a library this is kind of like a workaround if you want to parse some json strings into an object you can use a com object to the html file com object because that com object has the parent window and the json inside the javascript that it has um object and you can use the parse from that object, from the HTML file itself. So it's kind of like a workaround. It's not an actual library, but the problem, and here's what you have to keep in mind is you're dealing with com objects. So whatever you're passing through is in the language of that com object. And as we're using the JSON parser from that com object, you will get a JSON object. And here's the problem. You are used to normal auto hotkey objects to say, for example, this is my object. And I would say one equals one and two equals two. And that is totally fine. The one problem with this is that you cannot use certain characters in the property names. Like for example, you cannot use a dollar sign there. If I try to run this code right away, you will get an error right away. Illegal character in an expression. You cannot use the dollar sign there. In real JSON, though, properties should be quoted. And in V1, this was a thing. In V1, you could use the quotation marks to create properties. You cannot. You can no longer do that in V2. V2 will complain about that. You cannot use quotation marks in property names, which then means you cannot you know, escape things. How do you deal with that? Because now that is valid JSON. So even if you have a dollar sign in there, that is JSON, that is valid. But normal auto hotkey objects cannot deal with that. And what happens is that if you use the code that I gave you to parse JSON, valid JSON like this, that has the dollar sign in one of them, it will return an object. The problem is that if you try to access the properties, like for example, test, and this is the key point, JSON objects from the JavaScript parser, the things are properties, not key value pairs. They're properties, really properties. So when you get an object in here, everything is a property. And now you, you cannot use the bracket syntax to access. It's a property. In that case, you have to use the dot syntax. Here's the problem. This one works because it's a property that follows the auto hotkey naming uh, uh, restrictions, but this one will not work because it doesn't follow the auto hotkey naming restrictions because you cannot use a dollar sign in the name like that. So if I try to do this, of course, it's going to fail. If I comment this line, it will work. This will work just fine. So, oh, hold on. Um, what did I do? You have, you have to close the function. Oh, I, I simply. Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. So here I will get an answer when I try to access the property. So the parser works fine. I did, re I did get an object, but the object itself, I cannot use that character for the... So here's the problem. <clears throat> V2 has this weird syntax. You can use you can do this anywhere you want, but it is most useful in objects. <coughs> you remember that in V1, you were able to force an expression by using the percent sign and doing some variables here? You remember that? Well, that came back in V2 in a separate location. It is that you can force expressions. You can force an expression by using the percent signs around stuff. 
<laughs> so now, if you are in an object like this and you want to force an expression in there, you can use the percent signs and do math if you want. Five plus five, if you or and after that, call a function, function number, you know, and get whatever that function is appended to the five, and you got an expression that in the end is going to be the name of the property that you want to access. Okay. By knowing that you can do that, then you can force an expression and use quotation marks to send a string. In this case, the string is going to be this thing that you want, but but you have to force the expression. You cannot use it as, an, as a property name. And now it will work just fine. The two, which is the test, and the one, which is the type, they both work just fine. Mm -hmm. The problem is, this is really <laughs> ugly. This is so weird. And you can force the expressions in many other locations. It's just that I guess I would see them more often when you're trying to access um, properties of an object. And the property that you want to access is dynamic. I don't know if you remember, Joe, you that you work with V1 very often. If you had an object um, like this and you had um, a property test5 um, equals test, you could, if you wanted to access the properties dynamically, you couldn't say test and then five plus five, uh, so uh, one plus four here. That wouldn't return a five and then put it on test and then access that. What it would do is, is th that is a failure. But you could do the bracket notation in V1 and yeah. say test and then say four plus one. And that would then return what it was supposed to be returned. And let me just test it out. Let me just comment everything out here. So I have the object, the properties name test five, and I want to access test five with within a loop, for example. And and this would be a index or whatever. And so and you could do have, that. Test five is a variable. We have to change it in a string, I suppose. Uh, a string, I suppose. Um, it's a property, so that's okay. And that does Yeah, that is a property name. You, you don't have to do that. Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, so, so you yeah. don't you don't have to do that. It's not mandatory because it is a property definition. That's okay. So in this case, you see that even though I'm accessing test. And, and a math part in here, I was able to get whatever the property had, right? So you could force an expression by using bracket notation. That's gone. You cannot do that because that is now reserved for maps, not objects. So in objects, you cannot do that. V2, if I try the same in V2, you're going to get an error right there because, oh, sorry. No, let me go back here. It would say, hey, this this is an object. It does not have that type of item that you're trying to access because this notation is now for um, uh, maps. But now what you can do is use the dot. You're going to access a property, percent signs around this to force an expression, and that will behave the same now. It will use the word test, which is this, and the math to end up with five to finish up the property name and do that. So this is one of the issues of, well, not the issues, one of those peculiarities of V2 in which now you're forcing expressions again, which we wanted to get rid of that in V1. We wanted to get rid of the forcing expressions, but now you get them again, but in, the, in a different location. It's really weird. It's ugly code. I don't like it really much. And what if this is a very long code that calls another a function and does whatever, and then in the end, you, you, you lose the meaning of what you're trying to do. I'm just trying to get a property name. It's really weird. But yeah, 
Um, in any case, I would really suggest doing this. And, we might do, uh, that and then just doing that. It's a little bit. It's funny you said that because I, I, that's what I was going to say. That's probably what I would do. As much as I don't like it, it's it is. Easier. It, it makes more sense, right? Yeah. yeah, you're trying to access this property named whatever it is, right? Now, this is the thing. If you're if you're using this workaround, this HTML JSON parser, which is a JavaScript object, what you get but, back, uh, then if you want to loop through the object, you would have to do something like this to get the properties for the properties like and that is you have to do that it is like there is a um the objects the properties in um in javascript they're zero based so you don't start at one. You don't go like A index one, two, three, four, five. You have to do A index minus one to start at zero and get the first property you have in the object. Uh, That's where these type of things can we, uh, can we, show up very annoying. Can we enforce for loop on the object? No, I don't think so. Even it's not a normal. Remember, like just added that enumeration, didn't he? I mean, that that's not. That wouldn't change that. I'm sorry. Didn't Lexicos recently add the uh, the ability in a for loop to get enumeration from a com object? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe yes, very likely. I don't. I didn't read it that much. Yeah, but I don't know. Yes, I just, that would I be that would be yeah right. But that would be the reason why. So enumeration in a com object would be because we were forced to right. do this. We we were forced to do a loop like this. But if we have a for loop that creates an enumerator. And if we can do that with a com object, that's great because now I can say var in, you right. know, my object, right? So that, that would be great. I will I will play with that a little bit. Um, One other question. Can you go back to the thing and... Um, so go back to where line 10 was commented out, but line nine was not. And it was just something you said. I'm just curious, just for my edification on this topic, because we're kind of, to me, dancing around two different things. This works. Yes. This works. And this is where I'm, it's a not a subtle difference. It's a huge difference just sounds the same. It, my question is the, 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 the dollar sign type is valid. It's a valid JSON or is it valid yes. JavaScript? That's, or both. It's both. It's okay. Both. All right. right. Because JavaScript. Yeah. Remember that JSON just means JavaScript object notation. So it's a JavaScript. It's valid JavaScript. I wonder why I'm saying it's JavaScript is <laughs> a valid JSON object. All of that, that's totally fine. And in JSON, you must use quotation marks around your property names. So you could include many weird characters in there. The problem is, and that's what I was um, explaining lexicos, that in auto hotkey objects, that's not the case. You cannot put whatever you want. Actually, auto hotkey objects are really restrictive on what you can use as a property is, name. You you cannot even start it with a number. Which is so kind of ironic you, because the variables we did that video with using the emojis and stuff. Right? right. But but you cannot start a property name with a number. So that's interesting. Let me see if that's the case. Oh no, hold on. Uh, no, that's that's okay. Uh, there is, if I remember right, yeah. There's restrictions. Yeah. There's restrictions on how the naming convention is. You cannot start a variable, a normal variable, right. with a number. You cannot do that. And I thought that the properties followed the same restrictions as normal variables. I guess that's not the case. Message box one bar here. Yeah, so variable names cannot start with a number. I thought that property names would follow the same as the variable names. I guess not exactly, but there are a lot of restrictions. And I, I guess you cannot use, for example, the at sign 
Let me try something. Can I put the dollar sign at the end, though? No, you cannot use the dollar sign anywhere. Can we, can we use a percent sign? sign? You cannot use a percent sign. You cannot use the at sign. It has to be letters, numbers, and underscores. The other restriction like, was that it couldn't start with a number, but now it can. And throw, a, throw an emoji in there. Um, let's see. Um, uh, we do have, yeah, money, of course. Mr. Right. Money. I was gonna say, I, I sure um, hope that doesn't run. That hold on, no, 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 hold on. This is because of oh. this part, Aaron. No, that oh, good lord, yeah. Uh, let me see, hold on, let me <laughs> so you can add your emojis to your variables. <laughs> oh, mercy, yeah, you can do that, but you cannot use illegal characters like, like uh, punctuation yeah. mark. So, so you gotta use commas, underscores, and stuff. Well, underscores you can, but not single scores. Uh, sorry, um, dashes like this you cannot use and stuff like that. So, basically, you have to be careful with that. And, and that is what it, exactly the point that I was trying to make when I was um, replying to Lexicos. The problem is with this approach. The difference in how an object behaves in JavaScript and how an object behaves in out of hotkey, right? You have to be knowledgeable about those two things. And because as I was typing the answer to him, then I came back, oh yeah, I can force an expression, I can do that. And I tried it and it worked right away. And I used that in my in my answer because I was just replying to him um about those kind of things. He was saying, No, you have to use the this syntax. And I just said, like, hey. How do you do that? And then I came back and said, oh, yeah, you have you would have to know that that's a thing. If you don't know, then that is a problem, <laughs> you know. Um, so in any case, this is a very interesting syntax. Know that it's there and that you can force expressions in um, out of hotkey v2 in certain locations where you you usually don't use expressions. Oh, so you what cannot you're force is... an expression inside a string, though. Well, I we... wish. Can we use it in the like in line number twelve to find a property? To force an expression here, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You definitely can. That's totally fine. You can force an expression there. Wherever you're not supposed to put an expression, like a normal random expression, you should be able to force it in there. I can I can make this five plus five. Um, and now I can access the property 10 in there and it will work just fine. It's really weird. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing, you know? But I guess... I need it in certain situations because if the property that I'm getting is an invalid out of hotkey property, then I could force an expression to use it as a string and um, and get the value out anyway. In any case, just to answer your question, Irfan, yeah, that's how you solve that one. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> that was something that you were sharing. The reason why this question came in is because we were trying to move away from a JSON library because it used a DLL file. And this is a kind of like quick solution. And when uh, when you were using it, Irfan, then you figured out, oh, I cannot I cannot <laughs> yeah. access this property. Yeah, like that's where knowing about how to how those two objects differ and what you could do to access them um, comes in handy. But it's not easy. Not if, even I didn't come up with that right away when you asked about it. I came up with that when I was actually thinking about it and. I, formulating an answer to lexicos you know like that's when it oh but yeah i can i can force an expression somewhere yeah sure yeah yeah all right everyone so thanks for watching um don't forget we are i'd say if you're doing that kind of stuff our objects in classes course is a great fit for you um, i put the url up on the screen and uh, like the video if you learned something it really helps us out we release videos twice a week with the largest and best auto hockey channel out there have a great day cheers bye